what is the right stuff to use whenever you're replacing your transom wood? I'm working on the transom of my little 12 foot boat right here. I'm replacing the wood from the transom. This wood has been in this boat since this boat was built. Uh, I can tell because of the paint that's on here matches the paint of the inside of the boat. And this boat was built in the 1970s. So we're literally looking at a piece of plywood that could be close to 50 years old. Now this piece of wood clearly needs to be replaced. It's, it's rotting out right here where the motor mounts. Uh, it's had some ant intrusion and everything like that. So first off, this original transom is about one inch thick plywood. Odds are, from what I've been reading, is that a lot of this old plywood that was used back then wasn't even marine grade plywood. It was just plywood. And maybe this was good for the first 20, 25 years. That's something to think about right there. So there's a lot of people that will tell you the right way to replace this transom and the materials to use to make this thing last forever. However, the cost of that in terms of labor and materials expense is quite high. And I have a different approach that I'm gonna take. I'm gonna walk through some of the different materials for transoms and why we use or don't use them and why I chose the material that I chose for my boat. So let's talk about the top of the line way that you should go to replace this so that you never have to do anything again. And that is to use a material called Kusa board. Kusa board is sort of a synthetic plastic board that is designed for marine use. You can buy a piece of Kusa board. This is about four feet wide, probably only a little over a foot tall to stick in here in place of this plywood and the piece that I need costs $226. Yeah, $226. And I'm not sure if shipping is included with that price or not. That to me seems pretty pricey. So then I look to see, okay, what are some of my other options? Marine grade plywood. Marine grade plywood. I was editing this video and my section about marine grade plywood, I realized I didn't cover it sufficiently. Marine grade plywood is considered by many to be your second best option. Cheaper than Kusa board. Advantage of marine grade plywood is that the adhesives used between the plywood layers are meant to be much more water resistant, I believe. And then also the layers of wood have less voids in them. So. I assume that means the less like little chunks that are missing and possible gaps. So therefore, it's sort of a, a denser, more solid pieces of wood that are laminated together and therefore making it a better plywood for marine use. I can buy marine plywood for about $70 for the sheet that I need. Um, but of course, the sheet I need is one inch thick. I'd have to buy a half inch thick sheet and still glue, to, glue it together to itself to be able to make a one inch thick piece. In addition, what many people recommend with marine grade plywood is to make it last longer, is to seal it in fiberglass resin and a layer of fiberglass. By sealing it in fiberglass and resin, you do increase its potential lifespan. So you're not just buying a piece of marine grade plywood, you're also having to buy fiberglass and resin and spend the time and the money to seal that to make it perfect. The next option I found is Starboard. 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 Starboard is, seems like a synthetic plastic PVC type of board, specifically made for boats. However, I've never heard of anybody using starboard to do their transom. A piece of starboard this size would be about $88 plus shipping. I'm not sure if it's well suited for a transom. I haven't heard of anybody using it for a transom. If you've used it for your transom, 
or you think it would be suitable for transom, let me know in the comments below. I was worried about starboard, which made me think of one of my next options that I was considering, PVC board. I had bought some of this PVC board that I used to do the seat backing material in my big boat to replace the plywood and mounted my seat stuff to that. However, this is kind of flexible and it's half inch thick, so I'd have to use two of them sandwiched together, but it's relatively flexible. So that was something I was considering, but I didn't like the fact that it wasn't quite as rigid as it probably should be. So then some of our next options is pressure treated plywood. Well, you're not supposed to use pressure treated plywood with an aluminum boat. Apparently, I guess they react. Something to do with the chemicals, I guess they use whenever they're doing the pressure treating process. So you're not even supposed to use pressure treated plywood. So then the next option, regular old plywood can delaminate, can come apart where it's been glued, but BCX plywood, is rated for exterior use and it actually has a smooth edge on both sides and is very very similar to marine grade plywood from what i can tell and it's a lot cheaper matter of fact i bought this sheet of bcx plywood for under 17 dollars and this one sheet here this was a uh, four foot by two foot sheet, I can actually trace out the two halves that I need and glue them together. Some people will say is, okay, that's fine. Go ahead and use BCX plywood, but wrap it in fiberglass to put it in resin and in fiberglass that will seal it up and keep it from getting any moisture inside. If I was to buy the resin and the fiberglass materials to do that, to make it last forever, I'm going to have a whole lot more time and money into this. My thinking is that that original piece of plywood was probably good for 25 years. What I might do is maybe I'll paint it and paint both sides of it with some really good paint. Other than that, I'm not going to do anything at all. And that's going to have cost me under $20 to replace my transom versus 200 and some odd dollars just for a piece of CUSA board. Looking at our four worthy options, CUSA board definitely ranks number one. It is the highest cost, but it is the highest quality and the easiest labor because basically I just got to bolt that in there. Marine plywood plus fiberglass comes in second. However, the cost is high, almost as high as CUSA board once you consider buying the materials to fiberglass the plywood. The quality is going to be almost as good as CUSA board, but the labor is going to be the hardest because of all the fiberglassing time after you cut the wood. So then if we went with regular marine plywood, the cost isn't bad, the quality isn't bad, and the labor isn't bad, but I would probably be painting the marine plywood, which then brings us to the plywood that I'm going to use, BCX plywood. The cost is absolutely the lowest by far. We're under $20. The quality obviously is the lowest when you compare it to these other three options. And the labor would be the same as if I'm painting marine plywood. So the option that I'm going with is the cheapest option and the lowest quality. Why not see how long that holds up? If it lasts me a season and then it starts to rot, okay, I've learned a lesson. I've taken this apart. I can take it apart again. It's not the end of the world. It literally took me maybe a, an hour tops. I'm going to give it a try. This is my boat. What do I got to lose? I was riding around all last year with this rotted wood transom on there and my motor didn't fall off. So I'm going to put this on there. If it fails in a couple of years, I'll try something different. But for now, I'm going to try it with some BCX plywood that cost me under $20 rather than trying to go some fancy route. What would you use on your boat if you were replacing your transom?